Hello, hello everybody. This is Carmen with Elemental Designs. Um, so today I am here to start the follow along series. Um, this is part of the Art Journey Basics series that I have started. Um, pretty much showing you guys different art supplies, different products, um, your ways of creating your own alternate mediums. Also, um, you know, how you have, can use other mediums as well, other products, even household items to create art journal pages and or art in general. Um, so today this is going to be the first... Uh, the first layer, right? We're going to be creating our first um, background from start to finish. And by the end of this series, we're going to have a completed uh, art journaling page created. Um, I started this series uh, basically for those that wanted to start art journaling and didn't necessarily know how or didn't necessarily have, um, you know, all the products and or, you know, different kinds of art products, supplies, so on and so forth. So what I have pulled out for this um, are some paints and we're going to start with the primaries because usually these are the easiest ones to find um, and it's the yellow, the red, and the blue. And out of these three colors, we can make many, many different colors. Uh, these are acrylics by Deco Art, and they're part of their Americana line, but you can feel free to use any kind of paints that you have. If you don't necessarily have these um, colors, then by all means, choose three colors um, that you like and you can use those. Now, to complement these colors, um, for mixing purposes and to make them lighter, because I don't want these to be as bright as bold as these are. I've also pulled out some white, again from the Americana line by Deco Art, so that I can mix um, and make some of these colors a little bit lighter. So in total, I have four paints. Um, but it, like I said, if you have other colors that are already light and you don't necessarily want to blend or mix or anything like that, um, then choose the three colors that you would like to use uh, for this art journey, you know, follow along series. So today we're going to be doing the first layer, and pretty much this is all going to be the background. Every video that I put out for this um, art journaling is going to be one layer on top of the next. So we're going to do backgrounds today. Then the next video is going to be uh, the completion of the page. Um, so that hopefully by the time the word's done, you'll have a completed art journaling page. Um, then I'm going to follow that up with another art journaling page where we don't use any paints or very minimal amounts of paint uh, to create our backgrounds, so on and so forth. And I'll give you a quick example of what I have here. Something like this. On this page here, I didn't use any paints at all. This is all just collage papers, um, different strips of papers and things of that nature to create this page. There's no paint, only matte medium and paper. That's all I use on here on this one as well. This one has ink in the background, no paint, and it only has papers. So we're going to be doing a couple of these different uh, types of art journaling follow along pages and hopefully you guys will um, enjoy them and you will follow along and create um, you know some art journal pages. I would love it if you guys would share uh, what you create. It's not a have to, um, but if you will create a video that would be awesome and if you do um, Let's use the hashtag artjournal123 so that I know where to find them. And then I'll add your videos um, to a playlist that I'm going to create for the Art Journaling Basics. Um, that will be super exciting. But again, it's not a have to if you don't want to. Because um, again, Art Journaling is not so much just for creating videos on like YouTube and stuff like that. It's also a great tool for um, just expressing how you feel and just kind of keeping a record. Um, it's almost like writing down things in a journal, but with this, you're also incorporating pictures and things of that nature. So let's get started. Now to begin this, I'm going to go ahead and use some of my DIY paste. Now, um, I showed in my first uh, Art Journaling Basics how to create your own um, modeling paste as well as your own gesso. What I have done in these jars, I've actually combined them both. And I'm going to be using this in order to prep my pages. Now, if you already have a book that's for mixed media um, or and it's used already for like adding water and stuff like that, then you don't necessarily have to prime your pages with gesso. If you don't have gesso or you don't know how to make gesso, then definitely go check out that first video. I'm going to link uh, the playlist where I have them all down below. So here I've added on my little disposable plate some of this DIY paste. I'm going to water this down. Because all I'm looking for is just kind of like a watered down version of the gesso. 
I don't necessarily want it to be too, too thick and heavy because it'll just add too much weight to my page. So I'm going to just water this down and mix this in with some water. And depending on how large your page is or your journal, whatever you're going to be using for a journal is, then it depends on how much of the gesso you're going to be needing. This is a very simple gesso recipe. It's just school glue, a little bit of water, some white acrylic paint, and baby powder. And I'm going to be using my spatula to spread this on my page. And then I'm just going to spread this out. Again, this is just for prepping the surface so that we have um, a background, you know, a page that is not going to easily deteriorate once we add wet mediums like paints, water, um, you know, sprays or whatever we end up using on here. For this very first one, I'm going to keep it very, very simple and we're not going to be going too, too crazy um, because I want to show you that you can create this pretty much with anything. You don't necessarily have to have um, certain brands or certain things, um, you know, in order to create. And once I'm done spreading this out, I will go ahead and just heat set it. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just allow it to air dry if you don't have, let's say, a hair dryer, um, you know, like a blow dryer or a heat setting tool, like an embossing gun or something like that. So you can see a little dust go a very long way, especially when you're using something like a spatula to spread it out. If you don't have a spatula, then you can go ahead and use yourself a nice little plastic gift card or one of those little plastic cards that are no longer of use to you. And just continue to spread that out until it's all evenly distributed. Now there are many um, store brands of gessos that you can purchase, but if you're a beginner um, and you're still trying to figure out if this is even something that you would like to get into, then I definitely recommend that you create your own. That way you kind of get a feel for what the mediums do and what their purposes are. So when you do decide to invest money into purchasing your gessos and your matte mediums and your modeling paste, then you at least have an idea um, of what kind of thicknesses you like because there are many different thicknesses. We have heavy body, um, we have regular, we have clear, we have very fluid like um, gessos and you know, like I said, different kinds of mediums. So this will just kind of get, give you an idea of what your range is when it comes to what you like. So we're almost done with spreading this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this to dry this page up to so speed up. All right, so our page is now dry. And don't worry so much about the wrinkling. Um, this pretty much just happened because I did apply a little bit too much water in my gesso. Um, the thicker, you know, the gesso is, the less water there is, I should say, um, the less wrinkling you will get. But most of this will be in hiding after we're done with it. Um, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up some paint, you guys. So I've got myself another little disposable, and I'm just going to apply... I'm going to shake these up. Always shake up your paints when you're going to use them, especially if you don't use them regularly. And I'm going to apply a little bit. This is Santa Red. And I thought it would be fitting since we are in the Christmas uh, holiday. So I'm going to add a little bit at a time. And I'm going to work off with a little bit at a time because I want to be able to mix these um, to a lighter tone, like a more of a pastel color.
And here I'm getting some of the warm red. And again, this is cadmium yellow, Santa red, and then ultra deep, ultra blue deep is the color of that one. And add a little bit of white here. Just add a spray of water. I don't need to add water to the white one. And I'm just gonna more or less just put a little bit on each one, right? So let's mix that um, yellow up. So as you can see, it starts becoming very pastel -y kind, um, very light, very creamy. And I'm gonna do these one by one. So I'm gonna start with my yellow. And I'm just gonna add uh, color here and there. And I'm not gonna add them in any um, kind of, you know, specific order. I'm just gonna lay these colors down. I'm going to use up most of my yellow. If you want it to be a little lighter, then add a little bit more water if that's what you need to do. I'm going to leave a little bit of that on there so that I can get a different color. Okay. We got a white, a baby white. I'm just going to wipe most of this color excess off of my brush. And now I'm going to go into the red and get this to be somewhat of a pinkish kind of color. And I'm okay with them touching because eventually I am going to, um, you know, kind of get these to blend out a little bit. So I'm just going to add some of this pink. I'm just going to spread it out like so. And I'm going to bring one color into the next color. Now acrylics dry really, really fast, you guys. So if you want more blending time, then I suggest you work uh, a little bit on the quicker side. But you know, this is for having fun. This is just to get you kind of, give you some ideas as far as what you can do and how you can go about, you know, starting an art journal page. And this is why we start with a little bit of color because as our imagination starts to kind of expanding and you start get, kind of getting ideas, um, then you can start incorporating different things. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of that uh, pink that's left over right there. And now I'm going to start doing the blue. I'm going to bring some of that white in there. If you have a palette, you can use that on a, platter, a palette as well. If you have um, These are from the Dollar Tree. Uh, they give you six of them for a dollar. That's a great deal. This is a little dark, so what I'm going to do is actually add a little bit more white. Just add a little drop of white in there. It's actually a little bit too much, but it's okay. I want to get that really, really light. Nice and light. And for this, is really no um, specific way of painting, you guys. You don't have to necessarily be an artist in the in the sense of the word, uh, you know, being kind of like an artist. Um, anything that you do is art. It's your art. It's your style of um, creating. And as you move along, you will see that um, your techniques will, you know, they will go evolving as you start learning new ways of doing things. Um, you will start evolving. Your techniques will change. So it's not that big of a, you know, a bit, that big of a deal for you to be precise in any kind of way or, or feel like you're doing things wrong. There's really no wrong way to do this right now, you guys. You just have fun. You just put that paint down, get the feeling for how the, the smoothness, the way that the paint kind of glides, um, just all the properties of paint in general. Super fun. So my, my, my paintbrush is still kind of um, dirty. So I'm going to go in here. And what I'm going to do actually is add a little bit of more white to each one of these to get even a lighter tone and pick up some of that color that I have there already. So for right now, I'm going to mix a little bit of this red and I'm going to mix a little bit of this blue. I'm going to bring those kind of into each other. And now I'm going to add a different color here.
some of these colors will be uh, a little bit on the wet side so that's quite all right let them let them mix and mingle right let them mix and mingle right now we're just doing the first layer and the first layer is just about letting that paint down in future videos that I'm going to be doing for this series, you will also um, see other techniques and just other ways of doing this. Um, as well as, create, like I said, creating art journaling without the need of um, using paint. So let's mix in some of this yellow and some of this blue. As you guys know, that makes kind of like a green. By adding this white, it makes it more like a mint green. Adding more of that yellow, picking up more of that blue. And remember, you can always add um, you can always add more paint if you feel like okay, this is not necessarily the color that I'm looking for. Um, you can go ahead and add more paint if that's something that you want to do. This color is still a little too blue for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a drop of the yellow to make it a little bit more on the green side. All right, so we got a little bit of that green now, which is more of the color that I was looking for. So out of these three colors, you pretty much make the whole spectrum of colors. It's just about how much you add, um, you know, how you play with them, how you mix them. And you will see that as you go um, practicing and playing with these colors, you'll be able to just make all different kinds of colors because everything comes from the primary set. I want a little bit more of that blue right here. I want some purple. And right now I'm just laying it out. And you can do this in any style, any design that you want. If you have more preference towards one color than the other, then feel free to add more of that color. You don't necessarily have to copy this pattern or this um, design. Here I'm just adding a little bit of the white on its own. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can use whatever you like. You know, it's your page. You can create it however you want. You can add a little bit more of this yellow right in the center here. Get a little bit of that red and a little bit of that yellow. I'm going to mix that in together to get now more of an orangey kind of color. I want to tone that down, so I'm going to add a little bit of that white. Okay, right now we just want to fill up our page. We want to get all this color in here. And this is the reason why we just sold our page, because we were going to be using paints on this project. I'm going to get that white and a little bit of that red, mix that in. I get a little bit of that yellow to make like a melon kind of color. More. And right over that pink, I'm going to add a little bit more. So you can start layering different colors, right? I just get a little dab of white on that. Because I want different shades to show through. And you don't necessarily have to mix them together. As you saw, I just dipped into one color, dipped into another, applied it directly to the paper. That's also another way of doing it. You'll get uh, more variation that way of color. Now, try not to over mix them. Especially when you're dealing with so many different tones because you don't, I, I'm, unless this is your goal, you don't necessarily want to uh, mix all of the colors together because then it'll turn into a muddy kind of color um, because not all colors kind of complement each other. So just be aware of that as well. 
Here I'm just adding different things. And however this kind of inspires me as far as how the background looks, then that usually for me dictates what I end up using as a focal element. Right now we just have a whole bunch of different colors kind of going on. And this is um, more or less what I wanted, uh, what I wanted this page to kind of look like. So right now I'm very happy with the way that it's looking. You might look at this page and say, this doesn't make any sense. What is Carmen doing with all of these, adding all of these different shades? Uh, these don't necessarily go together. They might not look well together. But remember, this is background. So these are the things that are going to go in the back, right? They're going to all be hidden in the back somewhere. And I'm not going to add any more paint to my palette. I'm just going to start using up what I have here. And actually what I'm going to do now um, is grab a sponge and use up what I have left over here. So I'm going to clean off my brush, making sure that I get most of that acrylic paint off. If you have a little cup of water with you, um, then by all means do that. I have a little bit of mild soap in here and I'm just going to spray that down uh, into my brush so that I can get most of that uh, paint off. since I will continue to use this brush. But for right now, I'm gonna grab some sponges. And acrylic paint does dry rather quickly. So I'm just gonna see whatever's there, whatever's left. And I'm just gonna go into this and kind of start mixing some of these colors around. I start smoothing out some of these colors. And I'm also gonna use this to kind of um, pick up some paint from my little makeshift palette here as well. And here we're going into now adding textures, if you will. We'll start seeing different effects and different things happening on this, on this page. Now this is going to be in, um, in real time for the most part. The only things that I will be fast forwarding are going to be, um, you know, when I'm drawing things or things of that nature. But for the most part, this is going to be in real time. Here I'm just adding different, just different little things happening here and there with the leftover paint. So I'm doing a little bit of paint stamping, if you will. A little bit of paint stamping. And again, these are all things that are going to get lost in your background. But just in case some things do kind of poke through, you just want to have a little bit of interest um, kind of happening there. And right now what I'm trying to do is kind of um, these little sections where the colors don't necessarily meet in the way that I want them to meet. I'm just doing a little bit of this to kind of um, remove those, you know, separation lines. By putting something that is softer and not such a harsh line. Just so that everything looks kind of, um, you know, like it's intentional. Everything here is put down for a purpose. If you don't have a, um, paint brushes or any, uh, things of that nature, then you can always use um, sponges. You can use baby wipes to lay down your colors. You can use so many different things. You can even go into it with your fingers, you guys. You don't even need a paintbrush. Just add your color directly with your hands. You'll get a smoother You get it to blend out a little bit more. You get a smoother line. So you don't even need to add, a, you don't even need to use a brush if this is something that you wanted to create. Okay. 
and already you can see that those wrinkles that you once saw once I applied the gesso those wrinkles have disappeared you can no longer see those wrinkles the paper has smoothed itself out and if it's not smooth it surely looks like it <laughs> so no worries there you guys don't think like oh no I messed up the paper no 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 once you dry it, you're good and here we're almost done applying um, I'm just making sure that I use up everything that I have here so we went from a, 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 a background that was Kind of like, hmm, I'm not really so sure about these colors. I'm not really so sure about how this page looks. But don't give up, you guys. Don't give up. Just keep trying. Keep applying those layers. Remember, you can always add more paint. And this is why we start off with small amounts. So that you can go building your layers as you go. Once I'm done with all of this, I will go into it and kind of heat set it. and get this page nice and dry and then we're going to start adding some uh, stamping and we're going to start adding some other textures here and there using some tools that I have here on the side. Okay you guys, this is dry. Now if you find yourself in a predicament where you have, um, let's say you've, lay you've layered down some paint and you're like oh you know, you've done all the blending, you've done all the adding of colors and everything that you want, but you're still not satisfied with it. Then what I recommend that you do is stop what you're doing, get yourself the heat tool, or let it dry, let that whole layer dry, and then you could always come into it with more color. So for example, I still have my thing here. Let's say I'm not 100% happy with what this is looking like, although in reality I really am. Uh, <laughs> We can go ahead and get more color. I feel like this page needs a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a little bit more of that yellow, right? I'm going to mix it in with my white. And for you, that would be any color that you um, that you want to add, you know, or any anything else that you would like to kind of add in there. I'm going to use my little palette knife here to just kind of blend that up. So um, I want some more yellow in here, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add more yellow. And I'm doing this with my finger so that you guys can see that at the end of the day, you really do not need um, to have brushes. You can finger paint. If that's something that you like to do, if you're the kind of artist that likes to uh, get your hands dirty, like I know I do all the time, um, then go into it with your finger. Why not? Go into it with two fingers. Why not? Have fun. All the different things that you use are all going to create different effects and different textures, right? With some paint brushes, it's easier to blend than with others. Um, some paint brushes, the bristles are in one way, others have a different set of bristles or they're made in a different way. So you're going to get different uh, results from all different mediums that you use. Like your fingers, like a sponge, like your brushes, spatulas. Um, let's say I wanted to go into this maybe with a little spatula then. That is also something that you can do, right? So there's different ways. If you don't have a spatula, you can always use a plastic card. So like I said, there's different ways that you can go about uh, creating this. If you feel that your page is too dark, then you can always go into it with some white. And if you're really, really not satisfied at the end of um, creating your first art journal page, then Grab some gesso, you guys, and start over. Gesso your whole entire page. Let it dry or heat set it. And then you can go ahead and uh, start over. Right now, all I'm doing is kind of creating uh, little textures here and there by just swirling my finger around and just kind of doing that little motion there. Not necessarily trying to cover up any area, but just right now I'm just having fun for the sake of having fun. No actual rhyme or reason or, de you know, defined purpose. Just adding color, adding color, adding color everywhere. 
Okay, and I think I'm pretty satisfied with this now. So I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to clean my hands as much as I possibly can. I'm going to heat set this one more time, and then we're going to commence to adding um, stamping and other things to this background. I just wanted to show you that because sometimes we, we create and we don't necessarily feel satisfied with the way that it's looking. Um, and even though sometimes we keep going, we'll be like, oh, I did all this work and I still don't like it. Don't fret. You can always start over. At the so what we're going to do now is we're going to create, um, you know, different things happening in the background. And we're going to be using some paints for that as well, but we're also going to be using um, some stamps. Now, I've brought out some background stamps to you, and I've brought out an ink pad. So I've got this Bow Bunny, which has three different ones, which I'm really liking at the moment. Um, I also have this one with some text, and then I have this one with some stars. And also, to add uh, different elements to my page, I've brought out different caps of different sizes. So I have different caps here of different sizes so that I can uh, use them with paints, um, even ink, and add some other little you know, areas of interest on my page. I've also brought this because it's got the round hands. Um, so let's start with adding some stamping, you guys. So I'm going to start with some stars. And what I am using is an archival um, ink that is not going to move around with water and paint. Okay, and in one of my previous videos, I discussed uh, the different the different kinds of inks that you can use. So, for right now, I'm just going to add just little things here and there. Little things here and there. You might not necessarily, um, you know, want it all. You don't necessarily have to have it all. Like that is fine. So, let's move on to a different one. I'm going to use this one which I'm using without a stamp block, and I'm just going to add little bits of text here and there. And these are really good because you don't need to, you can manipulate them with your hands, so you can kind of rock them and just do, uh, you don't necessarily have to stamp out the whole thing, you can do little bits and pieces here and there. This is all just for creating that R journal page, right? So I'm good with that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, grab this kit right here. And I'm going to use a little bit of the cobblestone as well as the brick. So I'm going to go in with this one. And I'm going to do this all with my hands. You don't necessarily need to have an ink block. But if you have an ink block, then you want to use that, then by all means, feel free. So I'm just going to create different little areas where all these beautiful little things are kind of happening. And you can feel free to pull out any kinds of uh, stamps that you have. Pretty much any kind of stamp that is not going to be used as a focal point can be used as a background stamp. It's all about, you know, what your end goal is. I personally, when I create, I usually just like to kind of wing it. I never really have a rhyme or a reason um, for creating. I just like to just play, just play and have some fun. So then I add little circles here and there, and I'm going to do this with each of the colors that I have used to create this page, including the white. Now, if you don't necessarily have this, like little caps and stuff like that, then get in there with a pen or a pencil um, or something that you can create, you know, markings on your page with. Make sure that your page is dry.
All right, you guys. So as you have seen, I have added um, some details here and there. I'm going to grab my little spatula knife, and I'm just going to go into this right on the edge and just add some lines. Right? You can also do that. Add some lines here and there. You don't necessarily have to have, um, you know, a certain set of tools, again, to do these kinds of things. This is just all layering. Layering on top of layering, you guys. That's all it is. There doesn't need to be any level of perfection um, when you're doing this. This is just all background techniques um, to add interest to your background. So as you can see, there's many different ways um, that you can add background to your page. It doesn't necessarily have to be a store-bought item. You can find things in your home that um, you can use. Something that will create a straight edge, a card, different things. Just to add just little focal points, interest of uh, areas that kind of call your attention. Right? So we have a, a couple of little markings here. I'm only going to use that in the white. And then what I'm going to do to finish this page off is actually I'm going to add a little bit of white paint. I'm going to spray that little bit of white paint, a little bit of dot of paint, put a little bit of water. I'm going to thin that out. going to grab something and I'm just going to tap it. Depending on the size of the brush that you use, depends on the size of the little drops. Right now I just want little ones. Get a little bit more paint. And just be aware, when you're creating these droplets, uh, make sure that your surfaces around it are kind of, you know, uh, covered because you will get little droplets of paint everywhere. And I think this is enough. And this is what we have created today. I hope that you'll share your images, um, your progress with me. Um, you can find me at Design Elemental on Instagram. If you don't follow me there, then please, um, I hope that you do. I would love to follow you back and check out your work. And definitely stay tuned um, for part two of this process because in the next video, we are going to be adding some other elements to this. We're going to be adding some paper collaging, and we're going to start working on getting our focal points ready um, for the finalization of our first art journal page. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it informative. Um, please leave your comments and feedback down below. If you have any tips, ideas, and or suggestions, I would love to hear them. Um, and until then, you guys, happy mixing. Bye.